take the north and never give it back. So that's a good pick. You get the corner. I gotta go bold, right? I gotta go bold for this. Oh, yeah. She's, She's got some nice long Welcome back to the Unbearable Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Barron. Make sure to like and subscribe out there on YouTube. And as always, rate the show five stars everywhere that you get your podcast. Big shout out to all those that subscribed last episode. We have o- we had over 100 new subscribers getting closer to that quest for 5,000 subscribers before the NFL draft. So if you want to, make sure to hit subscribe because now we have version 2.0 of our new draft guide out there. Link down below in the description. Make sure to click on it. It is free. You can open it up and see all my different draft profiles, big boards, and also the new addition I added in the top 30 visits. And also, yeah, there's even more player profiles out there for you to check out. And like I said, we'll just keep on updating this over and over again. The more that we have out there, my goal is kind of 150 at least true player profiles that we have out there. So we're getting closer and closer to that goal. But I hope you're all doing well. Happy Friday. Hope you're all going to have a great weekend. And today, we're going to be breaking down the defensive ends. Like you guys said on YouTube, I sent out the poll. You wanted that over wide receivers, and I'll respect it. We'll probably have two separate episodes, though, for wide receivers early round and later round, just because there's so many out there. And I'll take an hour just talking about the first top 10, and then I could talk another hour on the bottom half. But today, defensive ends, and we'll do something similar like we did last time. I'll still have my top 10 that we'll break down, but I also want to talk a little bit more about some of these later round defensive ends because of the draft picks that we have available to us. And a lot of these top 10 players aren't necessarily in in the cards for the Chicago Bears unless they do, in fact, trade back. So let's talk about some of these players that we can get in day three. So for those watching, I covered up my top 10 But ultimately, you can see my day three, late day two, and early day three. We're not going to go into too much depth with some of these players, but I just want to kind of highlight some of them. So first off, I want to cover Miles Cole out of Texas Tech. Miles Cole, for those that are curious, because you might have seen him or you might have heard about him because of his just crazy athletic testing. Can he play football, though? No. No, (laughs) he has the gift from God. He's like 6'6 and just a freak of nature athletically. But unfortunately, this guy doesn't know how to play the game of football, which the Bears might look at and go, this guy's got long arms. This guy's a crazy athlete. I can maybe coach that. That's why I wanted to at least bring him up because you might see Miles Cole out of Texas Tech get some sort of hype. But man, this guy, this guy is the person like in your rec league back in the day that just had, ev- he was just built, he was tall, but he just didn't know how to play basketball or didn't know how to play football. That That is Miles Cole. He has all the gifts, but for some reason, he just can't put it together. So the next person I want to talk about kind of in that day three range as well is Jay Licks Hunt out of Houston Christian. Yes, Houston Christian. We've talked a little bit about him, and in some draft boards, he's super, super high. Now, some of the Some of the film that I've watched, I haven't necessarily fallen in love with this tape, but I do know that some draft experts really, really like him. I want to love him, and some of these sleepers I really, really, really want to like. I just didn't necessarily see it with some of his speed. I think he just purely wins with his athleticism at that below average type of uh, performance. The the teams that he goes against aren't necessarily the top tier, so that's why he's able to just purely win off off of his athleticism. But he is someone to look at that could go maybe even in day two if someone really does fall in love with him. But he is someone to at least keep an eye out for and keep your ears open for because a lot of people love him. When I watched it, I just wasn't overly impressed, especially when you're looking at how does that translate to the NFL. A couple other players that I do want to bring up, Brendan Jackson out of Washington State, someone that I really like, kind of high motor type of player um, that you could get in day three. That's just a could be a solid rotational player. Also, for those that are new to the show, the Ryan Poles icon means that they are above an 8.0 as a RAS score, and also they participated in the Senior Bowl. So Brennan Jackson out of Washington State gets a Ryan Poles, and also Cedric Johnson out of Ole Miss 
gets another Ryan Poles icon on that, participated in the Senior Bowl. He is someone who is a very, very good athlete, but yet again, did not necessarily produce too well at the NCAA level. So now, that's really kind of my day, some of my day three prospects, but I really want to talk more about the early day three and early day three, late day two, because this is the position group that someone might sneak out and, and play pretty darn well. And a lot of these players that I'll be going through are players that I'm like, they're so darn close to me, just absolutely liking them or absolutely loving them. But there's just something off about one of these players. If that's how I could kind of like categorize categorize these players. Like Nelson Caesar out of Houston played a lot of off-ball linebacker. But his snaps at defensive end, I liked. But do I want to draft that in a day two? Probably not. But then there's this guy who just drives me bonkers. <laughs> I had this person as day two. I've had this person as a late day one grade, but now he's ultimately down at the late day two, early day three. It might've just been because the latest film that I watched of this player, I just did not necessarily like, but he's got so many good, other good tape out there. And I'm talking about Jonah Ellis, defensive end out of Utah, junior 6'2", 246. And this guy, similar to... Layatu Latu, which we'll talk about later on, this guy has phenomenal pass rush moves. Really, really great with his hands. He's the 76 overall prospect, edge number 10 on the consensus big board, edge 15 on my big board. But like I've said, I've had this guy all over the place. If you follow the show, you might be like, wait, I thought you had him higher. I did. I lowered it. I moved it up. I lowered it. A lot of these defensive ends are all over the place, and that's why... This is such a fascinating discussion with some of these defensive ends. This He might go late day two, but he could go early day three. I think that now he might actually go in that kind of early day three uh, spot. So at pick 122 or even pick 75, if the Bears do not pick up a defensive player, Ellis might be one of those players that they could eventually pick up. But this is where I also moved him down because... If I think about what Ryan Poles might want, I don't really think it's this player. And what I mean by that is he's got some really short arms. He doesn't have phenomenal length. And that's what I saw come up on tape is that when he got beat, a lot of times it's when someone's got the reach on him and is holding him off. And he really needs to really get into you to then leverage his pass rush moves. Yet again, his his pass rush moves is his biggest plus. His hands is how he wins and because he wins with his hands, that's pretty darn important. But it reminds me a lot of Nick Herbig coming out. And also, too, he strikes me as more of a stand-up outside linebacker, more so than a true defensive end. But anyways, last year was his best year. 37 tackles, 12 sacks, one forced fumble, and 24 hurries. Also, 17.9 pass rush win rate, very good, and a 5.7% run stop, which is not that great. Now, like I mentioned Phenomenal moves popped off like when I was when you watch a highlight film of this player, you go, holy crap, this guy is incredible. This guy is so much fun to watch. But then when you put on the tape, you go, oh, wow, you got really bullied on that play. <laughs> and that's where Jonah Ellis to me is just all over the place because you watch the flashes and they're incredible. And then you watch some of the other plays and you go, it just doesn't seem like he could maybe fit around the NFL just the entire NFL circle. But I think overall, the Bears probably won't be wanting to look at him just because of his size and length. But you could see this guy all over the draft board. But to me, late day two, early day three, grade that I have on for him. Then next, this is probably one of the people, one of the people's, and just everyone's favorite person to call the sleeper of the draft. And you can see this by me having him a little bit farther down that I'm not necessarily too high, but actually I'm right where the consensus is. I'm talking about Muhammad Kamara, defensive end out of Colorado State. Redshirt senior, 6'1", 250. So even though he's a little short, he does have some of the good weight on him, but he's small. He's a smaller defensive end at that 6'1", very short, you know, yet again, lack of length. He's the consensus 122nd um, player on the consensus big board edge 14 and he's also my edge 14 as well 
I project him to go early day three, and he reminds me a little bit of Jose Ramirez last year. More so because Jose Ramirez was everybody's, this is the, the person that you have to get. He's small, but he's absolutely dominant at the NCAA level. And Mohamed Kamara, his PFF grade, 85.9, which was 27th last year. Last year, 56 tackles, 13 sacks, two forced fumbles, 38 hurries, 19.4 pass rush win rate, 5.1 run stop. He's just a constant, constant motor of a player that is just trying to like duck through people and just constantly fight for the quarterback. And that's why you see that 19.4% pass rush win rate, which is very, very good. But also, too, the reason why I'm a little bit lower on him is he wins with his bull rush. He wins with power and slipperiness and being a little bit smaller than everyone else. But if power moves are his kind of bread and butter and you're this small, and also I don't see a lot of bend to his game. Like every now and then, I think he's bendy in between like the tackle and the guard on inside moves. But on the outside, I don't really see that kind of going horizontal as he's trying to go after the quarterback, which is a big red flag to me if that's how you win. If you're already undersized and that's how you win, that's why he's a little bit lower. I think that he's going to be a true boom or bust type of a player. That's why I have him out at edge 14. I didn't purposely go with consensus, but ultimately I did. Now, a couple other players that I want to talk about. Javon Solomon out of Troy. He is someone that I don't have a player profile out on yet, but he's someone that does flash on tape. Very good production at Troy. I like him a lot more than Mo, uh, Mo Kamara. Just because I think that, yet again, another smaller player. I just thought that he had a better all-around pass rush skill set. His skill set, I just thought, projects better to the NFL level. But yet again, someone high production at a more lower level of the NCAA, but still consistent production at that. And then also Gabriel Murphy out of UCLA. Put on the tape. This dude is crazy good. I loved his tape. Very good hands. But he has 30-inch arms, very, very, very short arms, and also kind of projects, in my opinion, more as an outside linebacker. I didn't have him as – I had him at day two, moved him back, had him at day two, moved him back. Ultimately, he's the late day two, early day three grade for me. That's Gabriel Murphy out of UCLA. I just felt like the Bears, just thinking about it from the Bears' perspective – I just don't think that they would necessarily go after shorter arms, more outside linebackery than the big, powerful, anchoring defensive ends. But someone. So I've talked about all these players and been, eh, I don't think the Bears would go after him. Eh, I don't think the Bears would go after him. This player, Austin Booker, is someone to look out for out of Kansas. Yet again, in my last late day two, early day three grade that I have out there, consensus edge number 12, and ironically enough, my edge 12 as well, the number 97 overall prospect. So he could drop into that 122 range or at pick 75, or if the Bears decided to trade that pick back. Defensive end out of Kansas, Austin Booker, red shirt sophomore, 6'6, 245. This guy's got crazy length, crazy long arms, obviously 6'6, but even for his size, he's got long arms. But you got to look at his experience, red shirt sophomore. He only really played one season. The season before that, he only played 23 snaps. And he was also banged up this year. I think his total snap count is somewhere around like 540 snaps. This guy has not played a lot of college football. And what has he put up? 56 tackles, very good for a defensive end. Eight sacks, two forced fumbles, 27 hurries, and 14.8% pass rush win rate. Kind of solid. 10.2% run stop percentage a 78.5 run grade this guy is very good against the run long arms and he's phenomenal at this whole block shedding just with his length that's where I think that the Bears are going to fall in love with that and look at him and go holy crap we could get a lot out of this player he's a slippery player too can kind of slide through some of the offensive linemen very good reminds me of Max Crosby coming out because this guy just there's so much potential with him. Max Crosby, it was, well, this guy will be good if he can gain another 20 pounds, if he can gain all this weight and be in an NFL locker room and NFL workout program and gain this weight and then build to be something great. And I think that's why 
I feel like the Bears might really, really like Austin Booker because he's so inexperienced and he has kind of this blank canvas, if you will. And honestly, for being so inexperienced, I thought that he had some solid pass rush moves. It's just, why did you come out as a sophomore? Now, obviously, you want to get your money, and I'm not going to judge him hardcore because of that, but still, you should have stayed an extra little year, had another year with some strength and conditioning, and th- then you could get a lot more on your rookie deal. I That's at least my feeling. But Austin Booker, to me, if out of all these players, who I think could potentially be the biggest contributor out of these late, out of these kind of day three prospects, Austin Booker is that for me. So definitely someone to look out for. Like I said, does everything that the Bears want to see. He's slippery, has solid moves, but he's got that potential to be something really, really good. Also, played pretty darn well. At, or was he at the Senior Bowl? I can't remember if he was actually at the Senior Bowl, so scratch that. But Austin Booker, it's very very solid player that I think ultimately the Bears would like. So that is the day three. Let's get into my top 10, shall we? Because I feel like that's what we all want to see. We want to see the day three. Let's go in starting with my day two prospects. So with my day two prospects, let's get started with number 10, and that's Brandon Dorless. Defensive end out of Oregon, senior 6'3", 283. This guy is just crazy versatile, and that's actually where this person, I didn't know where to put him. I didn't know where to put Brandon Dorless because 6'3", 283, and if you look at his athletic testing, if you put him at a defensive end, his RAS score would be 4.45 because really mainly because of his size, that being 283, that's the only thing that's green. Everything else is red except for his expo- his speed grades, which are all in the yellow. But then when you look at him at a defensive tackle, 8.63 relative athletic score. Yet again, relative athletic score is not the end-all be-all, but it at least kind of shows, hey, you know, you should be more of a defensive tackle, but it seems like he wants to be more of that defensive end. But what I can tell you about him, besides just kind of that versatility, because he has played all over the ball and all over the offense, all over the defensive line, but something that I'll bring up is he's just very explosive. He's just an explosive player, can jump off the snap. That's where you see that true burst and speed. Yet again, at defensive tackle, you love that. At defensive end, it's okay. But even for his size, that's very good explosion numbers um, as a as an outside player that can really just kind of smash into people. And that's why he reminds me of a Carlos Basham, where just a big, strong, relentless player gives you the athleticism that you want that can play everywhere. But I'm always a little bit nervous about some of these tweeners. It seems like the Bears like the tweeners. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of that kind of in-between type of a player. Also, arm length, 33 inches. So yet again, fairly long arms as a defensive end as well. But also has some pass rush moves, but really it's all about his strength and pop in his hands. And that's why to me, I like the idea of this person that I liked Brandon Dorless in the third round. I think he goes out there. And at pick 75, I could see the Bears loving Dorless because I could see them going, this reminds me of a Demarcus Walker, someone I could play inside, I can play outside, and just a bigger, larger player. But to me, I'm always nervous about tweeners because if you're this tweener and you don't have a home at a specific position, I always feel like you ultimately end up being a career backup rather than like a good starter or a, you know, you're just kind of this contributor. That's just kind of my big fear with him. But I think at defensive tackle, he could potentially be a starter. Defensive end, I think he's more of just a solid player. But last year, 25 tackles, five sacks, one forced fumble, and 35 hurries, 10.5% pass rush win rate. Not great, but yet again, played majority at three techniques. So this these are more defensive tackle numbers. 5.2% run stop, not great. 73.2 run grade is solid. Um, but then last little bit, 72 player overall. Like I said, you're probably going to get him at pick 75 if you want to. He's edge nine on the consensus big board. My edge number 10, 76.9 grade from PFF, which was good for 97th. So 
next player that I have a day two grade on. And this, Doralus was kind of in its own, his own land in my day two prospects. But this next group of day two, pro all these day two prospects, yet again, if you have the draft guide, you'll be like, wait, I thought that you had these differently. Yeah, I, all these players, you can just roll the dice and they'll be all over the, all over the board for me because these, these players are just kind of nuts. So my edge number nine that I have right now, Marshawn Nealand out of Western Michigan, redshirt senior, 6'3", 267, and he has the Ryan Poles stamp of approval. So if you look at his athletic scores, 9.06 at the defensive end spot. How does he have this? An elite agility grade a with a 418 shuttle and a 702 three cone and a great explosion grade. Just good speed grades and okay size grades. But ultimately to me, I think that Marshawn Nealand fits what the Bears want. Yet again, you look at his arms, like yet the Matt Eberflus loves arm length. 34 and a half inch arms for Marshawn Nealand. So he checks that box for sure. And this dude just plays with just pure raw strength. I had him at like my edge six. I I literally had him at edge six and I kind of went all the way down to nine. This is where this guy to me is all over the board for me, but I think that the Bears will like this player. He's projected to go in the second round and I've seen some mocks where he drops to that 75th spot. Consensus, he's number 58 overall and edge seven. I have him at edge nine, but yet again, like I said, I can... You know, if I flip a coin, he'll be edge seven <laughs> and he'll be edge six. I just think that this group is so tight. He reminds me a little bit of Frank Clark. He's very similar build and also had an 89.7 PFF grade last year, which was 16th last year. 57 tackles yet again. Very good mark there. 4.5 sacks, two forced fumbles and 28 hurries. He had, even though that he only had four and a half sacks, 17.3% pass rush win rate very good, and an 11% run stop grade. Very, very good. 83.4 run grade is insane. This guy's a very, very good run defender. That's where when you see the 4.5 sacks, don't let that discourage you. He still was able to beat the person in front of him and just an absolute beast hand fighter up, for, up front and has a very good first step explosion like you saw in some of those grades. But also, the thing that kind of moves him down and around on the board for me is his stiffness. Very stiff mover, yet again, as an outside rusher. That's why he projects as kind of more that big power type of a rusher. And also sometimes you saw some of his inexperience come on tape where it just seemed like he didn't know what he was doing. So he just kind of jumped off and was like, I, I'm just going to get the quarterback and just starts attacking. And you can kind of see it on tape. He needs a pass rush plan. He needs to be disciplined a little bit more. And yet again, all reasons why I think that the Bears might really like him. Because I think that there's a lot of room for growth. The stiffness is a big question mark for me because as how elite could this player be? But I think he could be a solid player if you're drafting him in that day two type of a range. And someone that could give you kind of instant production. Do I think he's going to be a Montez Sweat? No, but that's why he's going inside of that day two range range so like I said these defensive ends though are going to be all kind of clustered up for me so let's go to my defensive end number eight and defensive end number eight I have Braylon Trice I know we have some Washington fans out there that watch the show Braylon Trice was another difficult evaluation for me because when you put on this tape the dude pops 6'4 274 junior from Washington and consensus edge seven, number 58 player, my edge number eight. Yet again, I have them all over inside of this day two range. Reminds me a little of, of, of a Tuli Tua Pelotu, 87.4 um, PFF grade last season, 49 tackles, seven sacks, one forced fumble, 53 freaking hurries, constantly in the backfield, 17.6 pass rush win rate, 6.3 run stop grade, and really has had crazy good production over the past two seasons at Washington. And that's something that you don't see with some of these players is consistent production. And having two great years is nothing to bat an eye at. But I think overall, he hasn't had a good 
draft season. He hasn't tested very, very well. Um, because yet again, measured in more at uh, 274. I think I actually have to update that number. He weighed in a little bit lighter at the combine and did not test well from the speed perspective. There was already questions about his agility that I had on tape, and it just kind of echoed that when you saw it out there on the combine. Just looked very unathletic, That and that's why he kind of started moving down. Before, this guy looked like a, a he was going in the first round, but now he's starting to dip and dip. And that's where I would love him at pick 75 because he could fall out of the second round where he's been projected to go. Yet again, he's the consensus 58th uh, best player. He could drop all the way down to the third round. But yeah, it's really that change of direction, that agility. But yet again, another person that is just absolutely strong with very, very good hands. Someone that I think that the Bears would, would like. But yet again, if he drops... A very highly productive player in the Pac-12. Um, I, I would, I would love it. But the only other person, the only other thing that I'll kind of just mention a little bit too, is you'll see another defensive end that will bring up. Some defensive ends really, really, really do well against the bad competition, and Braylon Trice did feast on some bad competition when he would go against a bad tackle. That's what I mean. When you'd go against a bad tackle, he would have excellent games. When you go against a good tackle, would then be quiet. So that's that's some of my concerns with them is at the NFL level, you're going against constant good tackles. <laughs> you know, your your bad tack your good tackles in the in in the in the NCAA are your bad tack can be your bad tackles at the NFL level. So those are just some of my concerns with Braylon Trice. But let's continue going on to edge number seven. And I already know, Broski's out there, probably saying that it should be a little bit higher because I know he's a Penn State fan. I know that there's a, a good handful of Penn State fans that watch this show too. Adissa Isaac is my edge number seven. Yet again, all over the board with this. And Ryan Pohl's stamp of approval. 8.97 relative athletic score, 6'4", 247. And and again, we got to look at these arms, almost 34 inch arms. And you look at what he did with his speed, 474, 40 yard dash, very good. And then a 10 yard split of 163. Composite agility grade was graded as great. And same thing with his explosion grade with the 34 and a half inch vertical and an over 10 broad. So tested, but nominally athletic. And also when I see his tape, a very well-rounded player. Redshirt senior, edge 11 on the consensus board. So I'm a lot higher on Adissa Isaac than the consensus. He's the number 91 consensus player. I have him at edge seven. If he's number 75, at number 75, I love it. I think that he's going to go in that day two range. It reminds me a little bit of Carl Granderson, where Carl Granderson could kind of do a lot. And also kind of this unsung hero as well. Everybody points to Chop Robinson at Penn State, but Isaac, very good, and has performed well. He was very good at the Senior Bowl. People were going, man, Isaac actually won in a lot of people's eyes at the Senior Bowl last year. 37 tackles, seven and a half sacks, one forced fumble, 20 hurries. He is just this absolute high effort, team captain type of a player, just a good all-around leader. 13% pass rush win rate, not phenomenal, but the 11.4% run stopping is crazy, crazy good. Bears will look at that and go, all right, you got the Ryan Pohl stamp of approval and you can stop the run. Whew. Hello, he's going to be a Chicago Bear, right? Three down defensive end. That's another big pro. A lot of these players might just be pass rushers or might just be run stuffers. Isaac can do it all. He's a true three down defensive end and like I've said phenomenal run defender now one of the big question marks he's two years removed from an Achilles injury but as you've seen has come back and performed very well and tested well athletically and my big question though is I think he's going to be a solid player I think that he's got a very good floor I'm curious on how high that ceiling is because when I see his tape I think it's very good I think it's very solid but I just want to know how high of a ceiling does the, does he truly have? And also just pure aggressive play strength. When you're seeing him against 
with some of these other defensive ends, it didn't necessarily pop too much for me on film, but still, Adissa Isaac, a very, I think, a good high-floor player that could be a contributor day one if the Bears were to take him at that 75 pick. But let's go to my next, and this guy, this is my biggest love-hate relationship, I think, that I have with any prospect, and that's Chris Braswell, another Ryan Poles stamp of approval. He's out of Alabama, senior, and you look at his testing, 6'3", 251, elite speed grade, 4'6", 40 time, which is insane, 158, 10-yard split, which is in the 96th percentile, absolute crazy, crazy speed grades, explosion numbers, 33 and a half inch vert, which is solid, and an over nine foot broad, which is another solid score, but it's about the speed. And where the Bears might fall in love, you know, we have to talk arm length, 33 inch arms, but then also too, reminds me a little bit of Will Anderson, not to the sense that he should be the number, you know, three overall player, but more so because Will Anderson was a player that to me was one with speed to power, that speed to power rush where you can just have this absolute burst rush through him. That's how he wins. And he just doesn't win as consistently as a Will Anderson. And Chris Braswell should be in the second round, number 49 overall prospect, edge six, my edge six, and 81 grade from PFF, which was good for 72nd. Now you look at his numbers, 42 tackles, eight sacks, three forced fumbles, 33 hurries, 18.2% pass rush win rate, and a 5.4% run stop rate. Not a great run stopper, stuffer. I question kind of his anchor. It seems like he can't just like settle down and just hold the blocker there and just kind of hold that position. More of that true penetrator and attack, attack, attack. Also, this is more of a developmental prospect where he shows this burst. He shows this speed. And that's where, yet again, the Bears might love this and say, he's got this burst. He's got this speed. We can train a little bit more. Yet again, another five-star athlete that the Bears might fall in love with, like a Javon Dexter or a Zach Pickens. But Braswell, like I said, love-hate relationship because I'll watch some of his tape and go, whew, this guy's got a lot of pop. This guy's got a lot of potential. And then other times I go, all right, you should have been a little bit better at the NCAA level. I won a little bit more out of him. But Chris Braswell, my edge number six. So. Now we're getting into the top five. And now we're finally also in the early day two. So we did all my day two grades. This is now late day one, early day two. So these would be if the Bears are totally trading back, like if they were to do that trade with the Buffalo Bills and go to pick 28 or have some sort of pick in the early second round if they trade the, the, the ninth pick to kind of like the Colts or something like that. So let's get started with my number five prospect, and that is Darius Robinson, defensive end out of Missouri, senior. 6'5", 285, this dude is huge. But the big question to me is, this is kind of like a Dorless, where Dorless to me had a little bit more explosion, a little bit more pop. Darius Robinson is just more of a true NFL player. Now, his agility grade, as for those that are seeing, Poor agility grade, but elite explosion, 35-inch vertical, an over-9 broad. These numbers are also if he played the defensive tackle position. And you look at his 40-yard dash, 495, which is very, very good in the 88th percentile for defensive tackles, and a 10-yard split of 173, which is in the 80th percentile for defensive tackles. Now, what that means, though, is, and let me get back to him, he reminds me a little bit about a little bit of Demarcus Walker and Darius Robinson was also someone that turned a lot of heads at the senior bowl. I didn't give him the Ryan Pulse stamp of approval because similar to Doralis, when you look at him at a defensive end, which is the position he's projected to play, not a lot of love uh, at that position, not scoring at the 8.0 and yet again, RAS score of a seven, seven, seven and arm length 34 and a half inch arms for any of those curious. So long arms, and this guy just has the size. And that's why he reminds me of DeMarcus Walker, where he's this bigger player that can play inside, play outside, that the Bears could absolutely love. They want the size, 
on these defensive ends spots. He's the consensus number 33 prospect overall. Edge five uh, for a consensus. Edge five for me. Projected to go more that late first and also early second. I think he's going to be more of an early second. I know during the Senior Bowl, people were saying this guy's going to be a first rounder. I think ultimately he lands in the early second round. 83.1 PFF grade, which was good for 54th. And his biggest weakness, though, or last year had 43 tackles, eight and a half sacks, one forced fumble, 27 hurries, 17% pass rush win rate, which is solid, 8% run stop, which is solid, 81.4 run grade, which is very, very good. But also, this was really his first year as a defensive end. Before that, he was consistently a defensive tackle for Missouri. But really, last year, first year at defensive end. So kind of still new to the position, but had a very good season last year for Missouri. Also, long, powerful, you you name it, right? This is just who he is. He's just a long, powerful defensive end prospect that can that literally played anywhere on the defensive line. But overall, when you have these larger players, they are just generally going to be slower. That is the biggest knock on him. He doesn't have this superhuman speed at the defensive end position, but ultimately he pops on the tape, and that's why he's a tier above those other players that we're talking about. To me, there is a separate tier, like the the day two prospects we just talked about, the five to 10, they're in their own group. The day three, like all those players are in their own group. And then Darius Robinson and this one other player are in their own little tier in that kind of early second, late day one. So let's talk about edge four. And you might already know who this player is going to be. And that's Chop Robinson. Edge four, 28th overall or consensus player. Edge four, my edge four as well. Junior out of Penn State, 6'3", 250. And actually, uh, if you look at it, 6'2", or 6'2.7", so... Basically 6'3", 254, arm length, as we got to talk about, 32 and a half, RAS score of 97.2. This dude just tore it up. 4'4", 40-yard dash, which is nuts. 1'5", 10-yard split. Both are in the 99th percentile. It's just, just crazy. 74 and a half inch vertical jump and an over 10 broad and a 4'2", 5 shuttle, which was above the 90th percentile crazy athletic testing. I remember we said that this was someone that people had to watch for those athletic testing yet again, junk yard dog is the way I categorize this player it reminds me of your tour gross Matos, where he doesn't have great hand usage um, overall, but yet yeah, he's going to go in the late first. The bears have actually had a top 30 visit with them. And last year, 90.8, which was the seventh highest PFF, uh, grade overall for defensive ends. But you look at his stats, 15 tackles, four sacks, two forced fumbles, 18 hurries on 303 snaps. So not a lot of snaps that he played last year. So that's why you see a little less production, um, but still 20.9% pass rush win rate, which is one of the tops in the nation, but a 5.9% run stop percentage. Not great, but I'd said that there was going to be someone that out there that did not necessarily do great against top tier competition. And this was a, um, a, a little, little pull from this. So he had 20.9% pass rush win rate. And if you look back at some of the grades, so he had 10 games that he had an above 20% pass rush win rate. So where he dominated. So there's six games in 2022 that he truly dominated and four in 2023 that he dominated. And if you look at that and you're looking at just like pure PFF grades, right? To see, are these people good pass blockers, right? Just a simple question. In only two of those games, he faced someone that had an above 66 pass block grade for the entire season. So what that means, he just, yet again, did very, very well against some of the lesser competition. And the reason why, the dude is just an athlete. The guy out athletes people, he does not have a lot of pass rush moves. And that's where, yet again, if the Bears want someone that they can develop, they will be drooling over Chop Robinson. High effort player, high athlete, just an absolute dog. Like, junkyard dog is the best way to describe this man. But yeah, does not have 
this plethora of moves. Also, I should have also put Rashawn Gary. Kind of reminds me of Rashawn Gary, where Gary was just bigger and more athletic in that sense. But Chop Robinson, just an absolute speedster out there. And that's where you see this kind of up and down success. And just with some good coaching, he might end up being the best defensive end out of this class. But he could also be someone that you go, okay, you can't win just purely based off of athleticism because everyone else is better. And that's my biggest fear with Chop Robinson. But man, his tape is so much freaking fun to watch. So now we're here and we got to talk about the round one grades. We have the top three and you already know who the top three are going to be. But it just is a question of what order will we have them in? And we already know Latu, Jared Verse, Dallas Turner, and I just want everyone to know, just because someone is going to be my defensive end three does not mean I think they stink. I think that there is a defensive end depending on what the Bears might want to go after. Dallas Turner is more on that speed side. And then you have Latu, who's more of the hand fighter. And then you have Jared Verse, who wins more with power. So my edge number three, which some might be kind of shocked by, Dallas Turner. And actually, this has not changed much. I have not changed my top three defensive ends. If you've seen it before, I've been fairly consistent with this. Dallas Turner, to me, out of Alabama, is my edge number three. 6'4", 242, junior, yet again, out of Alabama. He is the number eighth overall prospect, edge number one, my edge three. He's projected to go in the top 10, most likely to the Falcons, but could even drop down to the Bears. He had a top 30 visit with the Bears as well, so could be a future Chicago Bear. Reminds me a little bit of Hassan Reddick, just with his wins with that quick first step off the line of scrimmage. 81.6 PFF grade last year, 60, which was 65th overall. 53 tackles, good number. 10 sacks. Two forced fumbles in 33 hurries, 19.6 pass rush win rate, 4.2 run stop percentage, not phenomenal, 69.8 run grade, which is not great. And really, when you look at Dallas Turner, this is where what I'm curious about with the Bears is what do they want out of the other side of the defensive end? Because you have Montez Sweat, who's big enough, and his calling card has been the run defense. So do they want this big run stuffer over there? And do they want to pair it with more of this speed rusher like a Dallas Turner? Yes, a little bit more lightweight, but man, I don't have the athletic scores in front of me, but this guy burnt up the combine. Explosive, quick, fast. He, he's, he's incredible. He's got that speed. And yet again, someone that the Bears will probably look at and go, we could make this guy elite. Dallas Turner has the tool set to truly truly be elite with not like chop Robinson is a crazy athlete, but Dallas Turner already has some more of these tools in his toolbox. And that's why to me, I think that this guy could be an elite player, but to me, I, I like players that play run defense. And I think that the bears are going to highly value those players a little bit more than Turner, but also too, you expected a little bit more from Turner overall because but he did improve significantly from 2022 to 2023. And that's why I don't consider him a blue chip prospect. I don't consider him like a Will Anderson, so to speak, because Will Anderson was consistently dominant. Dallas Turner just was really dominant last year. The year before that was just kind of okay. But yet again, has some room to progress for sure. So let's get into my edge number two. And that is none other than Layatu Latu, a a Ryan Poles official uh, stamp of approval, UCLA defensive end, six, basically 6'5", 259, 32.6-inch arms, and you look at this, 9.3 elite grade. A lot of questions about his athleticism, and he shut up a lot of people. Having an elite speed grade at a 4.64 40-yard dash, very good, especially around that 260 mark, and also a 10-yard split of 162. That'll do. And also his shuttle, uh, his agility grades were great. His explosion grades were good. Just a good, good athleticism, athleticism scores, which is what you want to see. But this guy, Latu, number 16 overall prospect, edge three, my edge two, 
projected to go in round one. Reminds me of AJ Epinesa, the number one prospect, uh, number one highest graded prospect for PFF at a 96.3. I want everyone to know this. There was no more dominant defensive end over the past two seasons than Layatu Latu. He was the best, like just flat out the most dominant. And that's why the biggest question mark is that whole neck injury. And with that neck injury, injury, we've all probably heard it. He had to medically retire when he was over at Washington. Then he goes over to UCLA. They clear him. But even though, even besides the neck injury, that's like everyone's go-to. There is some stiffness in his game that I don't necessarily love. That, But overall, though, Latu just wins with his hands. This guy has the best hands in the draft. Some of the best hands I've ever seen. People were saying at the Senior Bowl that you don't see veterans in the NFL that understand how to use their hands like Latu. The way that he hits people with counters is just next level. And that's where, too, if the medicals check out, Ryan Poles might freaking fall in love with this guy because this guy continuously dominated everyone at the Senior Bowl practices. 49 tackles last year, 13 sacks, two interceptions as a defensive end, two forced fumbles, 36 hurries, a 26.2% pass rush win rate. 20 freaking six. A fourth of the time that he's out there, he wins in a pass rush situation. That is just nuts. That is crazy. That is insane. <laughs> and like I said, it's just, it's just the freaking hands. The only other thing too, because I got to just, I have, I have to talk negatively of him because he's crazy good. His anchor is another thing that you have some question marks on too. He wins kind of similar to like Johnny Newton. He wins by penetration and his hand usage, not necessarily by truly anchoring down on that outside edge. So that is something that another little kind of knock on his game. But man, th this guy is just phenomenal. He is so much fun to watch. He's just incredible. And this might be something that we look back at this, you know, literally not even a couple of years from now, a year from now and go, why wasn't Latu the number one player? He, he's, he's phenomenally good, dominated everybody. And that's where Latu, a lot of questions because of the medicals, but this guy could be an easy no brainer. And also too, if you watch a lot of Caleb Williams tape, Latu constantly was in the backfield destroyed the like his pass rush win right there had to be a hundred percent against the USC offensive line just some of the best tape you'll ever watch of a defensive end playing football Lyo to Latu phenomenal my edge number two which which means my defensive end number one is Jared verse now Jared verse the consensus edge two Number 13th overall prospect, my edge one, projected to go in the first round. Reminds me a little of like a Brian Burns, 84.9 PFF grade, 35th, um, which was 35th. For Florida State, redshirt junior, 6'4", 260. This guy just has a constant motor. And the reason why he's also my edge one, he was my edge two last year, right behind Brian Burns. I mean, not Brian Burns, uh, um, Anderson. And Will Anderson, to me, was an elite blue chip prospect. Jared Verse was right below that. And Jared Verse, to me, that's why he was edge two last year. He's edge one here. He backed it up. He's had three just really, really good back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back seasons. It's nothing sexy, but he's just a good freaking football player. 41 tackles last year, nine sacks, one forced fumble, 36 hurries, 21 point eight pass rush win rate 6.6 .6 run win rate and truly high motor and just a powerful player and that's why I think the Bears might if they want to go again with another power player that can give you instant pressure instant success Jared verse to me seems like the safest pick but yet again out of those top three I think he might actually have the lowest ceiling because I think Dallas Turner could truly be elite and Latu could just be this guy that constantly is getting double digit sacks. Well, verse, that's why I bring up like Brian Burns. Brian Burns is never in the conversation for top five edges, but Brian Burns is a constantly good player. And so, and then yet again, Jared verse two plays with a little bit of stiffness yet again, more of a true power type of a rusher. Um, and 
yeah, it doesn't have some of this elite bend that you like to see out of someone who might go in that top 10. But to me, true, truly, highest floor out of these elite rushers, I just think that he's a very sound, fundamental, good player that you can get, and I, I really like him. But let me know down in the comments, who's some of your favorite defensive ends that are out there? Because... I think when I'm looking at this as a whole, like we did with the defensive tackles, I like some of these defensive ends that you could get in this day too, right? With Braswell, Isaac, Braylon Trice, Marshawn Neeland, and even like a Dorless. But the thing that gets me concerned about these defensive ends, I think that these defensive ends are going to be going higher than they should. And that's kind of the vibe with some of these mock drafts that you're seeing. I think a lot of them are going to be going higher and higher and higher. And to me, that's why I don't necessarily love these defensive ends later on. And I look at like a Dallas Turner, a Jared Verse a lot too and say, well, if all three of those are available, Bears, can you get down to like the 13th pick, the 14th pick? And then if you like all three of these, just take one of those guys because they all seem like pretty darn good players, but it's Neapolitan. You just have to pick your flavor. What do you want? Do you want the more safe power person in a Jared verse? Do you want the, the handsy dominant with injury concerns with Latu, um, which a lot of people have said that the injury concerns have kind of, they're, they're overblown. He should be fine. And also Dallas Turner, more of that speed rusher that could develop into this elite player. But I said, let me know what you think down below. And I think overall though, later on in the rounds, I don't think that there is a a, a true sleeper this year from when I was watching the tape, but I do think that there's some developmental prospects like that Austin Booker to definitely keep an eye out for, but no one elite this year. So we'll see what, and also next year, supposedly it's supposed to be a phenomenal defensive end group. So maybe the bears go defensive tackle wide receiver. We'll just have to see, but you better believe we will have you covered. So make sure to like and subscribe and with that, have a great weekend. Unbearable Sports Podcast, we are out. Yeah, she's got some nice long hair and you notice know she's a...